TV. This is uh, Ministry of City Reaches, and we welcome you again. And we've got some interesting things for you today. My name is Eileen Vincent, and with me is Natalie Hardy here in the blue. And <laughs> here in the center, we have a, a wonderful guest today. And we're so happy to have um, Sarah Douglas with us today. And Natalie's going to introduce her and yes. tell us all about this wonderful young lady. Well, she's going to tell us about herself, really. <laughs> but um, we're just so happy to have you with us today, Sarah. Sarah is the founder and uh, director, the leader of Full of Grace Marketing. But I think she has a more special uh, title. Mm -hmm. Social media specialist. <laughs> okay. Isn't that intense social media specialist. Where did you come up with that title? I have no idea. I've never heard that Just title anywhere. That's my specialty, I guess. That's yeah. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, how, so tell us about Full of Grace Marketing. When did you start it and how did you start it? How did that happen? Yeah, well, first, thank you for letting me come here. It's a privilege to be here. Um, honored to be your guest. And, thank you. Um, so Full of Grace Marketing is, mm. I just want to say what it is. It, we are a, a digital marketing company here in San Antonio. Uh, my husband and I run, run it and we specialize, and so I got that word specialize, we do specialize in social media marketing. So think Facebook, Twitter, Instagram for businesses, for nonprofits. Mm. We help you manage it and get out there and reach your audience online. Um, a little bit of Facebook advertising, Google advertising, website development. So those are all our specialties. Mm. Um, but really, it started five years ago with just me, and <laughs> and I, I I did uh, part of my journey of being an entrepreneur. I did just quit my job. Uh, I felt like the Lord was calling me to quit for many many years, but I didn't know how or when, and I still didn't do it right. But I did it, and um, <laughs> I don't know when we do when the right timing is, but. Um, started it and then because I found my passion for social media mm -hmm. and really I became a believer later in life at 26 years old so I started Full of Grace Marketing at 29 and I just wanted to give my business up to the Lord so I really felt that calling um, to kind of name it something special yeah, yeah, yeah. so I really just added it's mm -hmm. not too clever but just added marketing after Full of Grace um, <laughs> because my life is full of grace God has given me a lot of grace um, and he's very good about that yeah oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so so yeah that's where full of grace started about five years ago my husband came in the business um three years ago when we got married and and you know took our services to expand to website and programming and, mm -hmm. and more google advertising and more technical stuff but really what i love about the industry is mm -hmm. now i've learned i first actually started full of grace marketing hopefully to you know help churches, help nonprofits, help Christian business owners. Yeah. But what I found was, especially in the beginning, a lot of them don't have the budget to, you know, hire an outside marketing person, sure, an outside right. marketing firm. So I did have to shift, but I'm really grateful for that shift because now I work with unbelievers, I work with believers. I work with any we work with anyone. Mm -hmm. But anytime they get to know us and they see us, they're like, I'm working with Full of Grace Marketing. Exactly. That name says something in their yes. heart. That's right, that's right. And we get to minister to them, mm -hmm. even just with our name and just meeting with them. Mm -hmm. And so we've worked with, um, you know, unbelievers that, you know, we end up praying for them in our meeting. We don't even know how this happens. Um, but it's I, the grace. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the grace. Well, yeah, I mean, and you all know, I mean, God's amazing and done mm -hmm. amazing stuff in our lives. So just that I love be, because I didn't know that five years ago, but the name just holds true to who we are mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter who we're working with. Mm -hmm. And um, God really started calling us. It, you don't have to work with just Christian business owners, work with everyone and you're still being a light in the world. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. In fact, that is essential. If we're going to be a light, we've got to be a light mm -hmm. where there's darkness. That's where mm -hmm. the light is needed, mm -hmm. isn't it? And so I think that's fantastic mm -hmm. that you're working with everyone, and that's a, mm -hmm. uh, it's evangelistic as well as business. Right. In a mm -hmm. sense, it's fantastic. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. And a service to the, the Christian church and Christian ministries mm -hmm. as well as a business. And, that, mm -hmm. and that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And so um, there is a huge amount of expansion that can take place with this mm -hmm. um, social media platforms because right. many people, particularly older churches, may not even have had a clue mm -hmm. uh, that there is an opportunity out there mm -hmm. with these um, different avenues. So, Right. I guess you've discovered that. And that's what we're trying to teach. Mm -hmm. And really this year, it's really um, 
kind of multiplied is my my courses that I do in oh, person. So you're doing teaching. So I do teaching, okay. and I'm not a professional speaker. And I kept <laughs> calling Natalie and being like, "What am I supposed to talk about in our interview?" I just get nervous no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, even though I do live videos, Facebook live videos all the time with clients, mm -hmm. but he's kind of grown me in that that now I'm speaking to you know 50 people at a time and mm -hmm. all and all the time at least one event a month so we do Facebook classes and, and uh, okay. Instagram classes and those are for mm -hmm. small business owners the church the nonprofits okay. that need that help and that push and if it's with UTSA SBDC their small business development it's free if it's on our own at different co-working spaces around the city it's maybe around $15 but it's a very low entry and it's mm -hmm. for you to take charge of your own social media and when you do that with UTSA mm -hmm. do they advertise it yes okay so we don't do one ounce of advertising honestly um, oh I do send the email list to my audience but mm -hmm. they have their own audience UTSA mm -hmm. economic development mm -hmm. so that's what's great is they get it out to every business owner in San Antonio that really? wants those resources okay so they fill up the classes that's that's really, <laughs> they that fill it up wonderful. that is wonderful uh, so anybody can go to that as long as they're connected with UTSA for that purpose mm -hmm. yes UTSA um, economic development okay mm -hmm. so yes. how does a person get connected to that I'm asking you yeah. for a lot of reasons because I don't know who's watching today but there might be a business owner or a church or ministry potential. out there exactly <laughs> potential who, business owner exactly yeah. who wants to be involved or yeah. wants to receive your your instructions so how do they get connected with UTSA for that purpose yeah I would go to the website so you can just google I don't know the website offhand but UTSA um, small Business Development Center, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. SBDC. Mm -hmm. um, so just Google that. But really, what, what you find on the website is contact them and ask them how I can get an advisor. Mm -hmm. It is free. And I wow. did that five years ago because guess what? I was now <laughs> on this journey of entrepreneurship and I didn't know what I was doing. So <laughs> I, I, went, I Googled resources and found them pretty quickly. So you can always find them. That is fantastic. And then I got an advisor, which I still, Crystal Darby's her name and she's wonderful. And I still go to her whenever I need to now. But your advising is free. You can meet with your advisor once mm. a month or that quarterly. And I, this is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> did Listen, you, folks, did this you is know? amazing. <laughs> but, uh, yes. Oh yeah, that's free, and and that's why they all they do a lot of classes for free or a few a few dollars, but the advising is free and it's wow, still free. Wow! So that is amazing. Every business owner needs to know about that. Or if you're thinking of going into business, they have different classes that you know that says well, there's one class that's called Start Smart because they want you to learn all, everything about running a business. So mm -hmm. before yeah, you get into yes. it, you can think about, hey, do I want all this responsibility? Mm -hmm. um, and most of us aren't called to be entrepreneurs, but mm -hmm. Um, if you have that idea, I would seek the help. And we have it here locally in San Antonio. We have the resources. It is fantastic. I mean, I had no idea you were going to say that today. So that is certainly worth our time today yeah. and worth you watching here and participating with us because this is rich information. Okay. Wow. Um, <laughs> how, how do Christian business owners and Christian nonprofits use social media? What, what's your experience with all of that? Yeah. So again, I still have this passion. Like, I want the Christian news to be out there mm -hmm. more than the traditional media mm -hmm. and all of this. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I know the Beacon's starting and we're restarting and as a magazine and we're helping them as well. But I, I, I think you all are doing it very well because I know you from a few years ago sure. and there wasn't any Facebook Lives, there wasn't an Insta Instagram no. um, mm -hmm. and they've been social on Instagram yeah. and Facebook Live and all that. So don't be afraid to get into social media. It is where you need to be because it's it's low cost. You don't have to do the uh, the whole tech setup here. You can go live from your phone even. That's right. But you're actually reaching people. So I want Christian. That's my message always to Christian business owners because I, I I do feel like there are some old churches yes, that yes. don't utilize it, no? yes. and you're losing people every day because we want to see the behind the scenes of a small church. Mm -hmm. How do they have meetings? Show that on social media. Who's their team? Who's the intern they brought in? Who's who's greeting people on Sunday mornings. Just show that in an Instagram story or Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. And you're connecting with your audience. So mm -hmm. I really want to point out who does it well, and I feel like City Reachers does it well. well. Thank because you very, you, very much. You invested the time and the talent to have 
a consistent mm. Facebook Live mm -hmm. presence, but mm -hmm. also I see you on Instagram, I yeah. see you on the other platforms, and that's where we're all at now. Mm -hmm. So that's just think of, even I tell people driving down the freeway, yes, there's billboards and all that. The driver's usually just driving, um, we're in our thought and going somewhere. Passengers on their phone, they're not looking at billboards. That's right. These billboards cost 3000 a month if it's a good highway. <laughs> they're not looking at billboards, they're looking at their phone. So That's guess right. what? You have an opportunity to be on their phone. Mm -hmm. And it's where they're at. You can post the same things on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and pe different people use it different ways. That's mm -hmm. right. So wow. reach people where they're at. And mm -hmm. it's free for the small churches. Get your, um, you know, your administrator or somebody mm -hmm. on your board that can help you with this if you don't have the funds right now, but mm -hmm. you need to reach people where they're at and not be left behind in technology. And excellent. That's, Amen. That's yeah. such a help for churches, really and truly, mm -hmm. who perhaps feel frightened about that kind of stuff, just never stepped into it. And this is incredibly good help. Yes, Very and good. I would I mm. love for them to step into it because <laughs> they're losing people every day yes. that, that want to be connected. There's another um, aspect. Mm -hmm. If people get involved, then they also learn what's happening in the rest of the world, mm -hmm. in the rest of the city, in the other churches, and they, they will see beyond their own four walls because they're right. trapped in there if they, they don't look out. Mm -hmm. But on social media, they'll see all these other things as well. And right. it broadens everybody's um, aspect of mm -hmm. what's going on in the city. Mm -hmm. I, I think it that. promotes creativity, really. When you mm -hmm. get out there, you start yeah. thinking about ways to be out there, yeah. things, messages to bring, yes. how to bring them. Uh, I mean, there's some very creative mm -hmm. uh, use of social media these mm -hmm. days. and. Uh, I'm not sure I'm quite personally there yet, uh, you know, <laughs> walking around doing my own personal vlogs, but um, at least I know the term. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can be very creative with it, yeah. Absolutely. Well, what do you have, like, a successful media campaign uh, that you'd like to talk about today, share with us? Yes, I wanted to share because it's, it's, it's to the nonprofit world, and mm -hmm. a lot of us are mm -hmm. in the nonprofit world. Um, but we help his bridge builders. It's a nonprofit on oh, the east side. Love that Christian. Ministry. Yes, mm -hmm. I love the Fetchners. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, but we were helping them for a year before this the Big Give essay uh, came on. And if you don't know what the Big Give is, it's the one online giving day for San Antonio and surrounding counties. And you have about 800 nonprofits sign up this last year, 2018. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we are helping them. Uh, so. This year, we helped them raise fifty-one thousand dollars. Wow! Praise God. So, but I have the story behind that. Yes, <laughs> tell them. I, ha I want to tell people that I know social media is quick. I know social media changes twenty-four every twenty-four hours, but it was the longevity of doing it right pays off. So mm -hmm. we were working with them already for a year before that, and it was consistent messaging pouring out of their social media channels, involving their volunteers, people commenting, learning about volunteer opportunities. We have donation, monthly donation campaigns now. Um, you know, different things going on with the, the behind the scenes of the ministry. Mm -hmm. For a whole year, they were active. We were active. We were helping them. So when it came down to the Big Give SA, mm -hmm. it's like we just picked up and then and, and changed our messaging of now we have the Big SA going on. Mm -hmm. So all these people that have already been seeing our message for a year mm -hmm. are recognized the ministry. The yep. ministry was on their mind. We were doing some advertising on Facebook for them. So. It was just like a reassurance that Facebook works and social media works. It was um, not just through social media raising these funds, but it was getting the employees, getting the board mostly on mm -hmm, board mm -hmm. with the Big Give SA and pushing out our messages. Wow. So reaching other people. So I can't say, it, and it wasn't just social media, I know that brought in $51,000 to this small little nonprofit. That's right. In the years mm -hmm. before that, they were barely reaching a couple, a couple thousand in donations. Mm -hmm. And but it's really a group effort, and also the the consistency of social media. Mm -hmm. They were consistent before that, and I know everybody wants to sign up for the big give, and we'll post for two weeks, and hopefully raise a thousand dollars. And I mean that's a small goal. That's true. And and then and I met with the board. Her name was Terry. I'm not sure if she's on the board right now, but she was like, no, our goal is twenty five thousand, and we had big goals. We started dreaming big, as mm -hmm. a, as a board, mm -hmm. and and then we just helped them how to how to push out messages, hear how to do it. And so we got each individual person involved in this campaign. So it wasn't one person. Mm -hmm. It was 50 people sharing on social media. This is what's happening with his bridge builders. Please support wow, us. Wow. 
It wasn't one person and it wasn't one social media platform that made us successful. It was a group effort, it was months of work. And you have to have a group effort to make the sound big, to yeah, make the presence exactly. big. All these people involved in the process is necessary. Yeah, and it's not just one person sharing the message and hoping other people share it. Right. It's several people, like at least 50 people in your organization or volunteers or board mm -hmm. that share the message and mm -hmm. get it out there and actually connect with people. Very um, good. And then also what, what makes me so happy is the big NSA has, they were 13 on the leaderboard. Remember, 800 nonprofits mm -hmm. are in this. Yes. They get, give SA every year. Mm -hmm. And they were number 13. And guess who's always number one and two? Uh, I think it's dogs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you guys, you guys know. So that, okay, so I love, love animals. So don't, don't, don't send me hate mail, but I love animals. But, um, <laughs> Number one and two are always guaranteed. They're animal organizations. They're yep. animal nonprofits. But there's people starving on the east side of San Antonio. And I, since we go down there so often, there's people that don't even have um, bed sheets to put on their beds. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, and then they're not being educated, the kids, you know, but his bridge rulers is the outreach there. And the Christian outreach is spreading the gospel there. Mm -hmm, that's right. And so there's people starving on the east side, but number one and two, they, they raised probably, I don't know, $100,000, $200,000 or something is the animal funds. So I was just so happy to see like a, <laughs> a Christian nonprofit on the leaderboard and just, yeah. That it was about San Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's nationwide. That's the animal right, it's true. Nonprofits make the most, get the most donations. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, that's nationwide. <laughs> Not humans, but go ahead. <laughs> well, you know, that is amazing to me, uh, what you're talking about. And I think it would be incumbent upon other ministries in our city to hear what you're saying yeah. uh, and think about their messaging mm -hmm. and how to do it via social media, maybe even contracting with you to help them do it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. And we'd love to. Yeah. And if people wanted to connect with you to do that, how can they do that? How can they connect with you for your services? Oh yeah, just go to our website, fullofgracemarketing.com. Mm -hmm. um, and also, of course, social media. I'm the one answering the messages. <laughs> so you can direct message us or comment and reach out to us. Um, our information's everywhere, so <laughs> you can't miss it. As us. it should be. Well, mm -hmm. it's very clear to me um, <laughs> that you are you love this work, Sarah. You love mm -hmm. it. I can see how passionate you are about it. Your face lights up when <laughs> oh, you're yeah. talking about it. <laughs> so uh, that's a wonderful thing that you're able to do what you're passionate about. Very few people have that opportunity. Yeah. So how, how does living out your, what does it mean to you to live out your passion? Yeah, so I, I am doing it right now, <laughs> so it's kind of funny, but, um, but I, okay, and this other thing, I'm passionate about being passionate. So <laughs> it's so like. That's well said, that's <laughs> very well said. Yes, yes, because, yes. so there's been a few, we've had a few interns with Fuller Grace, and my husband says, oh gosh, every intern comes to you, they talk to you for like an hour, and then they go and quit their job. And I'm like, I never tell anybody to go quit their job. And these are, you know, 20 year old girls, but, but it, it's just, it does happen. I'm honestly, every intern I've had, they've, they were doing us another side job and they quit. And it's not that I preach that. It's just, I like love to talk about like, what are you passionate about? You're so young. You have so many opportunities. Do you know you can be doing here and get this experience and the here and get this experience? And they're at this job that they're complaining about the manager, you know, and it's like, well, you have an option to get out. And I know financially it doesn't always make sense, right. but it's just, you have options, you know, especially in the U S you have options. And, um, so it's kind of like, we all have different passions and I have several, one is social media and I'm grateful and blessed every day that I get to do it as a, a work to, to my monetize my passion. But I have so many other passions. I have travel, I have, um, um, ministry like uh, international mission trips I've been on several mm -hmm. and then photography hopefully that will be my next career I mean we all have so many passions sure you mm -hmm. just have to pick like one that maybe you can do on the side for now or or make it your full-time job but what I, I, I just in the world today and you we see all these people depressed and everything it's a real issue and employers need to know that mm. people are not living out their passion and they're depressed there's I mean, just all the issues that go along with that. Mm -hmm. So that's why I just love, you know, talking to people about their passion and how you can live it out. And even if it doesn't make sense to do it full time, because the majority of people, 90% of people are not going to be business owners. So, and that's fine. It's really just finding what you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 
either you know through your work or and, and, and that's where I go into strength finders is like finding that strength so your employers can know about your strengths and what you love to do. Let's talk and about give, that and a give bit. you more tasks mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I want to talk about this, but I also just one more example is my husband started working in the business, the marketing business, um, and he loves programming and computers. So that's another love of his. Mm -hmm. But we started a, a food business, a Caribbean food, because he's from Grenada, a little Caribbean island. <laughs> and uh, we started you know, a, a sweet potato dessert and a drink business. And then I saw, so he loves his job now, but then I saw his passion come out. Mm -hmm. And he's up at 1, 2 a.m. that because he's like cleaning up and baking and, and making more <laughs> rounds and, and, and putting the ingredients and the spices together. And I'm like, what? going on like I saw his passion ignite yeah. ignited yeah because nobody can force mm -hmm. you to do something like that yep. and stay up yep. through all the hours of the night it's just that passion mm -hmm. so I'm like what yeah, so it's kind of yeah I love finding that in people like <laughs> mm -hmm. what will you do 24 hours and not sleep you know wow and it's and everybody it's different and and for you I both of you I do see like prayer oh my god and I love seeing your live videos and you guys pray and that's that's uh, I know one of your passions. Sure, you know, yes. and the way you serve God is through prayer. Yes. Um, but anyways, yeah, we can go into this. Um, you know, some ahead. folks may use their passion, but in in employment, they mm -hmm. don't have to be an entrepreneur because oh yeah, it, because that requires a special set of gifts to be an entrepreneur. Oh yeah, yeah. yes. And so um, it'd be a wonderful thing if people found an outlet for their passion within their daily job. Oh yes. That, that's incredible. And then you can say, I love my work, <laughs> instead yeah. of, you know, oh, wait for Friday. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yes. And, you know, and majority of people night. wait for Friday. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and I that, know in the elevator here, yeah. so often I hear, oh, thank goodness it's Friday. I yeah. Think, what a way to live life. This is very hard. I know that is. And I, yeah. Yes. Yes. And and, and I, I know that I'm blessed because I don't say that anymore. But I yeah. did say it before that. Yes. And I was still working in marketing, but for a corporate business. Yes. And I said I said that every day. Yes. So what was the difference then if you were in marketing, uh, but it was drudgery compared to doing your own business, doing marketing, and it's mm -hmm. fantastic. What's the difference? Mm -hmm. So there were limitations. Like I had, I found that I was having a passion for social media and putting it, even sending it up the ladder chain. Mm -hmm. And they were, it's like, no, we don't need that right now. No, no. There's a lot of no's uh -huh. in that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they, you can't see the potential when you have mm -hmm. so many policies in place and so many um, approval processes. And the corporate world works like this a lot. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they, they, sh and that's going to be changing as you see more uh, millennials and the other generation after mm -hmm. that. I forget what it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> because you just want to be, I guess, recognized for your innovative ideas. Sure. Mm. And that's shut down yes. a lot in the corporate world. So yes. when you're in, you're innovative and you're trying to take a company somewhere, mm -hmm. and they're shutting you down because management has personal opinions about something, mm -hmm. that's when you go out. Like that's Blockbuster. Like mm -hmm. you go out of business. Mm -hmm. Like why why didn't Blockbuster do Netflix? Right. Mm -hmm. They had the whole industry. Yeah, they had that's true. billions of dollars, and they had the whole industry um, as attention, mm -hmm. and it and it flipped. And yep. so and those are those those procedures and processes in corporate world that don't work anymore mm -hmm. and just I guess that's where I felt like everything I had so many ideas and I wanted to get them out mm -hmm. <laughs> whenever you feel like that that's a frustration and, and then if you get you keep getting denied it's that's when I was just like I, I kind of always but I kind of always wanted to do my own business okay I didn't okay. know what okay that okay. came way later probably after college I wanted to do something but Mm -hmm. I was so shy and timid uh, to meet <laughs> people, so I really was, and I am still an introvert and everything. But, but yeah, it's like it came ten, <coughs> like maybe ten years later, where I found the right fit for me. That's such an interesting mm -hmm. combination. You don't hear about entrepreneurs being introverted mm -hmm. necessarily. You mm -hmm. always think about them being these yeah. Elon Musk extroverted yes. type people. Yeah. Um, but so was it hard for you being an introvert to start your own business and to do the business? I think it took me longer. Extroverts have a, a way of, you know, just yeah. going after doors. it. Yeah. Going after I feel like you're yeah. an extrovert. 
I think. <laughs> I think. So you you could just go for your yeah. idea. You just, just go and meet. People. You just go and meet. And I just am not comfortable going and just asking for, hey, can you connect me with so and so and connect and connect. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I think it just took so long. Mm -hmm. It's it's a little longer, but I had to be self confident in myself. Yeah. yeah. And that took a many many years. Okay. So. Um, Many years I don't know. after you started or before you even started it? No, before I even started okay. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. so I think it just takes just a little longer. Taking sure. place, bringing you to mm -hmm. your fulfillment. Oh, yeah. This is your fulfillment, yes. Oh, yes. You were intended for this, yes. Yes, and I feel that, yes. yeah. Yes, yes. And as God keeps pushing mm -hmm. me into new yes. things like speaking, yeah. public speaking, which I don't like yeah. at all, <laughs> um, I, I feel it too. I yeah. feel God pushing me. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay. You know, and I listen to other people and it's like, they're not perfect. I'm not perfect. You can just do it. Yeah, you know, right. and, and and having a few practice. success successes in your background enables you to step out again. Yes. Yeah. On yes. the next one, the next yes. thing. Right. Just yeah. gotta do it. Exactly. Mm. So tell yeah. us, tell us about Strengths Finders because I know that was very important for you. It in is. Doing this. Yeah, a little bit because um, again, going in with passions, but also just the business world, and mm -hmm. this applies to any business owner. I really feel like if if you have your employees take this test and it's like you buy the book it has a code you take the test online mm -hmm. it's more of an assessment a personality assessment or mm -hmm. um yeah it's a personality assessment but really when you find your strengths we really shouldn't focus a lot on our weaknesses like we all have weaknesses mm -hmm. that's right but why not focus on your strengths instead mm -hmm. and just build there so you can live out mm -hmm. your dream or your mm -hmm. passion or what god has planned for you and it just makes sense because my um my strengths in here, it goes very deep into what your strengths are. So it's connectedness, mm -hmm. uh, developer, relator, responsibility, and restorative. So I guess a little bit of each just really quick. Connectedness is uh, having deep connections. I don't like artificial or, or um, like fake friendships, mm -hmm. a lot of acquaintances. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't know, I just love going deep. Developer doesn't mean like a programmer developer. It means developing people. So okay. that's where the mm -hmm. interns I want to develop mm -hmm. them so they can go out in the world and do their mm -hmm. do their thing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Relator again is that relationship with people. I love um, into some intimacy with friendships mm -hmm. and responsibility. So I love get I'll I'll, res I'll be like I'll volunteer for this. I'll volunteer <laughs> like because I want to get things done. I'm just an act yeah. also activator. Like really yeah. want to get things done. And restorative, of, I want I'm not really um, liking conflict. <laughs> so I want everything to be restored and everybody to be friends. And, and so, but within that, one of the strengths, one of the like little paragraphs I was reading, connectedness. You are a bridge builder for people of different cultures. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and that's that spoke to me. Like, oh, I married a Grenadian, somebody from a different culture. <laughs> but also, I love, my other passion is um, feel, um, mission trips. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I've, I've been to Ethiopia, Brazil, and um, Peru, and all these churches. And so it's like, you're, I do, you're a bridge builder for other people. Mm -hmm. And then there was something else, but maybe I can't find it. Um, and to have one of your clients mm -hmm. be called bridge builder uh, yes, is that's quite interesting. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's weird. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, oh, okay, and then the, this was uh, just one more example. Oh, it's still connected, I guess, that one. Seek out global or cross-cultural responsibilities that capitalize on your understanding of the commonalities inherent in humanity. Mm -hmm. And so I know I'm doing social media, but I also have that passion for like cross culture and, mm -hmm. and, and anybody, anybody, and really social media is global, mm -hmm. too. Yes, you reach right. the whole world, and that's, that's right. where that... The Christian ministries, which I still have a dream of, you know, a lot of Christian ministries getting the positive news of mm -hmm. who's accepting Christ and yes. yeah. what is God yes. doing in the in the communities that we don't see. It's mm -hmm. all it's all negative news really on mm -hmm. social media, That's but right. it's it's kind of like pushing that out instead of the other news. And we have mm -hmm. that opportunity today because social media you can do it right here in your office. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but it, it just brought out a lot of different things that mm -hmm. I didn't know. It's it's more about being self-aware. Mm -hmm. And us like I'm the tail end of the millennials, but I do have to say we're very we we're very selfish. Like we want to 
do our mm -hmm. passions and yeah. live it out. Mm -hmm. But also we need to be self-aware and know where we stand in the world. Mm -hmm. um, it is through our relationship with God, yes. But it's also having that, oh, this makes sense why I'm this way. Mm -hmm. And in an employer setting, mm -hmm. it's that she's good at, this is her five top strengths. So now you know she's she's connectedness. So mm -hmm. if I ask her to do something and it's quick and I'm short with her, she's gonna feel that you like you don't like her. She's gonna have to start having these different thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so you have to approach people that have connectedness with a little more, I guess, humility or like a little more. Hey, like love, spend love. a little love, a little love. more love, because mm -hmm. that's how they communicate with others. And so I would assume, based on what you're saying, that when a person takes these the Strength Finders test, not only do they know their strengths, they also learn how to. Mm -hmm. Play well with others. Oh yeah, yeah. based on because it gives shape. you like who to work with and okay. how to work with other people. Okay. Fantastic, oh, that's, that's great. That's well, interesting. I'm so glad you yeah. brought that up because I'm sure those who are watching today, mm -hmm. you'll be blessed by this. Mm -hmm. Go yes. get the book, take the test, and mm -hmm. see what the Lord says to you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I want to ask you one final thing before we we finish today, and that is, where is God calling your business at this point? You've already talked about how the Lord has stretched you in these five mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. Where is he stretching you now? Mm -hmm. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel, I guess it's, it's kind of unlimited of sure. what I can do next. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like, again, the speaking, the courses that I've been doing, I've been learning a lot there. And so, and then it's also, I've been, been yes. asked yes. to be a part of different settings and now you know, go to different corporations and do a training for them, a specialty. Mm -hmm. So it's just growing. So I feel that that's coming, some, going somewhere. Yeah. Um, and then um, I have a lot of dreams. So I, I, I still have so many ideas, but I want to, you know, build online courses as well and have like an online community of, uh, of databases for the business. Um, it's just unlimited then with my husband and I working on a whole different industry, food business. Yeah. Um, so, and then again, like I said, we all have so many passions. So I see later down, I'm like, I love photography. I love capturing the moment. Mm -hmm. And you need that also. I do a little bit of it in, so, in social media, but I love photography. So, hey, can that be my next career or something? <laughs> well, we will have to wait and see because the Lord is always speaking. <laughs> and I'm sure he will whisper into your ears, take this step, you know? Uh -huh. Yes. That's yeah. what he does. Mm -hmm. So I was fascinated too. You love mentoring. You're, you're right. all the time bringing up others. So if, when you move on to your <laughs> photography business in the future, you yeah. will have left behind a, a large crowd of those who yeah. you mentored who will be carrying on with this. So yeah. it's just it's just wonderful. It's wonderful. Yes, and yeah, it is. I love your heart. I think it's, it's just uh, fabulous. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know our viewers today will have really gained a lot of it. important information here because Come on, this is, we can grow <laughs> businesses, we can grow ministries through social media. This is incredible. And yes, and God's given us that gift. We need a bit more know-how yeah. sometimes. <laughs> and I know this precious young lady here, Sarah, can help you <laughs> and yes. just get you on the right track. So know? with that in mind, Sarah, can you just say one more time how people can reach you to mm. work with you in your business? Have yes. you worked with them? Yeah, so even on, hey, let's be social. Let's mm. be <laughs> on social media. Facebook, look up Full of Grace Marketing, message us there, connect with us. Um, you know, my email is on there on the website, fullofgracemarketing.com. Anywhere social media platforms are, you can find me, and I'm always willing to help somebody and, and take a, you know, 15-minute phone call and talk to them. So. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for coming today, and thank you for sharing this very valuable information. I know you were blessed by that, so keep watching, keep stretching out. As we get ready to go into 2019, you should be asking yourself, what should I be doing now? And most importantly, ask the Lord, what should I be doing next? Mm -hmm. Maybe he's going to start speaking to you, mm -hmm. and you know what source, resource you can use to know your strengths and to step into them. So mm -hmm. thank you for watching us today and for being a part of this, this, this uh, broadcast. Mm -hmm. And we'll be back next week, next month. Mm -hmm. Next month. Next month. Next, yeah. next <laughs> month. That's another thing that we have weekly, not this <laughs> So. Next year. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Next Actually, next year. year. Wow. That's right. Next year we will be at Carlos TV again mm -hmm. with another interesting person for you to meet. So be blessed. This is City Reaches, and we love San Antonio. Yeah.